and the legs cross. Tight near the center of the shin so the feet draw closer underneath of the knees. Okay. And then we'll start by reaching the arms up into the air, stretching through your fingertips and have your arms be even a little wider than shoulder width so, so you have space between your collarbones and then turning the triceps forward slightly. So the arm is rotating from the outside in. So it creates an external rotation here. And again, that just helps to broaden the collarbones, broaden the chest. Reach up through all 10 fingers to help lift the front and the back of your rib cage and allow your gaze to be forward and slightly up. Perhaps even a little soft smile passes onto the lips. Already feeling the breath naturally becomes more full and deep. Yeah. And then we'll bend the elbows out to the side, going a little lower than the shoulders, spreading the fingers, stretching from elbow to elbow. So all of this is to create breadth and lifting through the front and the back of the chest. So feeling that through the breath, filling naturally, deeply, fully. And then keep the opening and the lifting in the chest and just bring your palms to touch in front of the sternum. The elbows stay down by the sides as your thumbs connect to the base of the sternum and then lift your sternum toward your chin. Okay. You can even bring the hands a little bit lower. So just like right down at the bottom of the sternum. Good. Yes. And lifting up through the back of the top of the head. So there's a slight bowing in the chin, but you still feel space in the front of the throat. No constriction. The breath flows freely. And as you're ready, the eyelids can soften, close. Now envision you're riding on each wave of breath, traveling in and out of the body. Feeling where you expand and lift with every inhale. The spine stays lifted, but when you exhale, you feel tension melt away, softening down through the backs of the shoulders. And together, we'll chant the sound of Om three times to connect with this primordial creative vibration. So we'll begin together in the next inhale. exhale bow your chin a little more deeply towards your chest keeping the shoulders back and the chest lifted keeping the head bowed on the next exhale release your palms down to your mid thigh gently pressing into your thighs so your arms feel like kickstands propping up your shoulders even more feeling the length in the back of the neck as you surrender the thinking mind down to the compassionate center of the heart. Cultivating non-judgment toward ourselves through this practice. Being open to be curious, to explore what is as it is. Letting this be our intention. And on your next inhale, gently raise your head up. 
And as you begin to softly open your eyes, allow your gaze to extend out thousands of miles to the horizon. And as you extend out, your sense of center settles back into your spine. So there's a sense of settling back, but also expanding out. Again. And then just very gently, we'll transition to a hands and knees position, keeping this inward awareness and mindfulness with every movement, even as you transition from pose to pose. So the palms are under the shoulders and the knees under the hips. And now with the toes untucked, press into all 10 toenails, press into your palms, and as you exhale, Tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin, and draw your navel up toward the ceiling for cat pose. And then as you inhale, gently pulling your hands and your legs toward each other without actually moving to help create energy in the limbs as you draw the heart forward and allow the spine to arch with the shoulders drawing back. And then the exhale breath is to round into cat pose, tucking the tailbone, dropping the head, and inhaling, arching through the spine, drawing the shoulders back. And again, exhaling and rounding, connecting movement with breath, riding on the wave of each breath. So when you're ready to inhale, arching again, and again, exhaling to round. One more time, inhaling to arch. Now tuck your toes, lift your knees to lift your hips, press your thighs back to the downward facing dog. And then pedal your feet out here. So one at a time, bend each knee and work the opposite heel closer toward the floor. Keep stretching the arms. Letting the elbows be straight, spreading the fingers and the head can just release so the neck is relaxed. And then keep pedaling your feet as you look between your hands and now the pedaling creates a walking forward, stepping your feet toward the front of the mat, about hip width apart, landing with your heels under your hips. Coming into a flat back, so fingertips to shins, draw your shoulders down your back, inhale. Exhale, and release your head, fold over your thighs. And then bring your hands to your waist, draw your shoulders back, press into your feet and inhale to rise up. Lift your chest toward the ceiling, and exhale, arms by your sides. Tadasana, I'm just gonna tilt my camera. And then inhale and we'll sweep the arms back up. Lift your heart to the sky. Exhale and swan dive, folding, leading with your chest. Get fingertips to shins. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, ground your fingertips. So you can bend your knees a little here to step your right foot back into a lunge and then dropping the knee down to the earth. Good. Magnetize the front and back leg toward each other. And just feel how that creates a, a sense of energy drawing upward, up the spine, so that it's easier to release the hands from the floor and bring them up toward the ceiling. And it's safe here to sink the hips low. It's okay if the knee goes beyond the ankle toward the toes. Drawing the shoulders back and the shoulders lift the heart up toward the sky like a shelf. Inhale, good, and then exhale, floating the hands back down to the floor under the shoulders as you lift your back knee, step back into plank. Good. Good. Pulling your heels back to pull your tailbone towards your heels as you extend forward through the center of your brain. Inhale. 
And then exhale, lower your knees. We'll do the modified chaturanga. So shoulders back, lead with your chest as your elbows bend by your sides, the chest and chin touch the floor. You kind of look like a grasshopper with the elbows pointing up. Inhale. Then exhale, we'll just slither down onto the belly. Okay. So here we're in baby cobra position. So press into all 10 toenails and tighten your kneecaps. So you feel your thighs floating away from the floor slightly. And then magnetize your pubic bone toward your sternum to create a sense and energy of the tailbone pointing toward your heels. That just helps to lengthen the lower back and connect uh, the core. So magnetizing pubic bone to sternum. Now float your hands off the floor. So this is a variation. And then pretend like your elbows are trying to kiss behind your back. So they won't touch, but they're moving in that direction. And that helps to float the chest up and draw the shoulders down your back. Keep extending through the crown of your head, forward, forward, forward. So your neck is long in the front end in the back. Inhale. And then exhale, lower back down and place your palms under your shoulders. Now tuck your toes, press up through hands and knees. Lift your knees to lift your hips into downward dog. Release your head and even though this is a really strong position, it's a chance to rest and reconnect with the rhythm of your breath, to uh, reconnect with the energy extending through your limbs, stretching the arms, stretching the legs to create traction in your spine. And now keep the left foot grounded and inhale, lift your right leg up into the air for a three-legged dog. Now that right thigh rolls toward the floor. So that'll just help keep the hip from rolling open. It'll keep your hips square if that right thigh internally rotates. Inhale, lift the leg a little higher and tighten the knee. Make it absolutely straight if you can. Good. And now exhale. Okay, let me see. Round your spine and come forward. Bring your knee towards your chest. And then inhale, send your leg back one more time. Tighten the knee, reach through your heel. Good, and then exhale and step your foot between your hands, even if it takes a couple steps to bring it forward. Good. Move this in front of me. Let's see, oops, that was my thing. Yeah. Sorry. No worries. Okay. So have your front foot heel grounded. Good. And then as the hips drop, you'll feel the stretch in the front of the back thigh and you'll be stretching the Achilles tendon in the front, in the front here. Inhale, draw the shoulders back, lift your heart. And then tuck your back toes to lift your knee. And then as you exhale, lift the back leg let it float in the air before you bring the legs back together. It could be hip width or together now as you fold. And then fingertips to shins, inhale, flat back, shoulders back. Exhale and fold. And then bring your hands to your waist, draw your shoulders back, lift with the muscles in your upper back as you inhale and rise up. Lift your heart to the sky. Draw the tailbone down, little back bend. And exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Good. And then inhale and sweep your arms up overhead. Good, exhale, swan dive, spreading the arms, leading with your chest as you fold. Good. Inhale, flat back. Now exhale, left foot steps back, nice and deep, landing the toes far back and then releasing the knee. So the front heel is grounded and then magnetize 
the legs by trying to pull the mat front and back into the middle. So the legs don't actually slide, but you can, you can even see like a little zap of energy drawing up. So that just helps you get lighter off your hands so you can lift up into the sky, drawing the energy of the legs up the spine as the shoulder blades serve the heart toward the sky. And the arms can be shoulder width. Eventually the hands can come to prayer, but really there's an opportunity here, an invitation for self-expression. You know, you can spread the arms, just feeling beautiful and graceful and reverent, offering your energy and your practice towards something higher than, than just yourself. Maybe the capital S self, divine self within. Inhale and exhale, floating the hands down, grounding under the shoulders. Now to step into plank, first we can lift the back knee, press into the hands, and then step front leg to back leg. Tighten the kneecaps, pull the heels back to pull your tailbone towards your heels. Inhale. And then exhale, lower your knees. Keep the sit bones up. You can even wiggle your hips here a little bit to release the low back for a moment, creating some fluidity. Now the elbows brush past the ribs as they bend, chest and chin release to the floor. Shoulders draw back, connect with your breath. And on the exhale, slither onto your belly. Untuck your toes. <laughs> I see your cute dog. Aww. Press into your toenails to energize your thighs and draw your tailbone towards your heels. Now bring your arms by your side so your head and your chest are already floating away from the floor. Arms by your sides and press the backs of your hands into the floor. And then from there, roll the front of the shoulders open. So already the chest is lifting more and more. Keep pressing firmly into the toenails. Kneecaps are tightened so the thighs are engaged. And then lift your legs away from the floor. So this is a locust pose variation, salabhasana. Drawing the shoulders down the back. Keep extending the center of your head in the same direction uh, that your heart is pointing is where you place your gaze. And the center of the head extends naturally with the curve of your spine. So the back of the neck is long. Now float your arms away from the floor. Roll the shoulders open, stretch your fingertips towards your feet. Inhale, good, and then exhale, lower down. Place your hands on top of each other under your forehead like a pillow and rest your forehead straight down onto the pillow. And then again, wiggle your hips on the floor and release the low back giving the front of the thighs a little massage against the ground. The belly gets a little massage. Connect to your breath, the expansion of the lungs against the earth. One more full inhale and exhale. And then very gently placing the hands back under the shoulders keeping the elbows drawing in, tuck your toes, press into your palms to lift your hips, and then lift your knees and press the thighs back. Downward dog, stretch the arms, stretch the legs. The thighs roll toward each other slightly. It's like a micro movement. It helps to spread the backs of the legs and creates a compact effect on the hips, rather than letting the toes turn out or the thighs roll out. And then inhale your left leg up. And exhale, bring your knee towards your chest, tuck your chin, drop your head. Good, and then inhale and extend the leg back. 
Good, and then inhale, look between your hands and exhale, step your foot between your hands. That's hard. I don't know how people do that. Like I can't, I guess I'm not flexible, but every time I do that, I have to go this. And then a couple, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of times I have to also, and I mean, it's a practice for a long time. So it helps to practice a few times. And what I find happens is probably my hip opens up a little bit as I come forward because if it just stays in the center, yeah. what I end up having to do is that same side hand kind of comes off the floor a little bit because when it's just in the middle, oof. Yeah. It's just so, it, I feel it in my core. <laughs> so left legs forward, inhaling into the chest and then exhale. You're gonna lift the back leg and before it steps all the way forward, float it into the air. Look forward. It's like a little standing split almost. And then release the leg down and fold, exhale. Inhale, flat back, arching the spine and the upper back, look forward. And exhale, fold. And bring your hands to your waist. Inhale, lifting through the upper back to rise up, lift your chest. And then exhale, Tadasana. And then step your feet apart, about as wide as your mat. I'll face you now. So about as wide as the narrow width of your mat. And you'll turn the toes out. So we'll do a little goddess squat. So to inhale the arms up, and then exhale, Bend your knees out to the side, bring your hands into prayer down through center. And if you can keep the heels on the floor, but if not, it's okay if the heels lift, bring your elbows inside the knees and press the knees open. Draw the shoulders down your back. So creating some length in the spine as you open the hips. Good, stretch the inner thighs. And with the elbows pressing on the inner knees, pressing them open, it's like a little workout for the arms and the thumbs come toward the sternum. Lift up through the center of your brain. Good. So then from here, we'll do uh, like a crow prep that is an arm balance and it's a good stretch for the back. So you can just bring the hands down under the shoulders and then the hips lift up. Now step your toes together and open your knees to the outside of the upper arm. So your knees like open like wings kind of. And then we're placing the knees high up on the back of the arm. And it's okay if the toes are apart a little bit too but it's nice to start with them together to bring the hips like more compact. Good. Then just press your knees into the back of your armpit, like right at the top of the tricep. Okay. Yeah, and just press. Keep the toes on the floor for now and lift up through your hips and draw your navel towards your spine. And look down between your hands, slightly in front of your hands and get lighter on your heels. And you can do it a couple times. Whew. And it's also hard sometimes with just skin on skin is slippery. Yeah. If yeah. I had a skirt on, I could probably balance, but I, but I Yeah. So you can, we can just touch and go and just touch upon it and we can build on it as we continue the practice. But I like this one uh, to release the back even without balancing and floating up with the legs yet. So you can touch and go a couple times and the spine is rounded. So there's a rounding. The shoulders stay away from the ears. So the shoulders still draw down the back, but the navel draws in and up. So it's a stretching through the spine. Yeah. And then after this next one, we'll just come down again to hands and knees and then child's pose. So toes touch, 
knees about hip width apart. Press your hips to your heels, nuzzle in. And then walk your hands forward. Release your forehead to the earth. So keep the arms active, pressing into the hands, stretching the arms to press the hips closer to the heels. And as you press into all 10 toenails, gently hug the outer ankles in. So you're creating a straighter line through the ankle joint. And it also creates a density through the lower legs that helps to pull the hips down, helps to stretch the low back. And just allow the center of your chest to release toward the earth, filling with breath. The upper spine moves back in behind the heart, helping to create that sense of surrender through the chest toward the ground to gravity. Little smile on the face to help soften all the muscles in the face. And then gently walk your hands up and place your palms on your knees. So we'll do some fl fluid movement to help release tension in the back. So I have my toes touching and then I'm gonna create some width in my knees. So often we like to keep the knees in line with the hips, but it's okay to go a little wider here if it feels good. And then we'll just circle the shoulders back one at a time. And let your head follow the swaying of the spine. So we're leading side to side with each shoulder. First in this direction. Feel all sorts of cracks. Yeah. <laughs> cracky. Uh -uh. Yeah, I like to add these fluid movements with the rigidity that sometimes comes with the alignment in yoga. So it's like, oh yeah, I gotta let it go. And then when you're ready, just reverse directions. And you can even exhale through pursed lips. Or it could feel good to release the sound. <sighs> Whatever comes naturally. Don't have to force anything. And then this time we'll go back and lead with the elbows. And then see how it feels to reverse directions this way, almost like swimming. And here, feel the connection in your core. So as the arms create movement through the spine, you feel this sense of lifting in and up through the belly. So it helps to protect the low back. It also helps to keep the energy from dropping down, keep it lifting up. Good, and then we'll go with the arms back. This last faster is slow, as feels good to you. And then we'll reverse directions when you're ready. Just swimming forward. And then we'll finish off just rolling the shoulders back so that we get a lift through the chest. And then bring the knees a little closer together. Hug your outer ankles in. So then you'll really get a stretch in the front of the shin and we'll keep the ankle joint straight. And then bring the fingertips to the side, arch over, and we're gonna go side to side in a fluid movement. So again, drawing the navel in and up to help keep the spine in its natural curvature as we arch side to side, again, to protect the low back, but also the energetics of that, drawing the energy up from the tailbone to the crown of the head with this internal lifting. <clears throat> the technique that we'll see across cultures, anywhere from yoga to belly dancing, this drawing the navel in and up. One more time each way. 
Good, and then back to center. We'll inhale both arms up, and then we'll exhale and come down, touch the floor with the forehead. And then we'll round the spine as we roll up. So let your arms be passive like noodles. And then rounding up, stacking the spine vertebrae by vertebrae. One more time, inhale, lifting up. Exhale, press down into your toenails to stay rooted at your base. The hands and the forehead touch the floor. And then rounding the spine, rising up to sit, stack one vertebrae at a time as you come up. Good. And then we'll come forward to hands and knees. And one more time here, a downward dog to stretch the backs of the legs. So down dog is like a neutral pose where we get to open up the back body and release the spine. So in between different um, explorations of spinal movements. It's a, it's a way to reset into a neutral. Okay, now walk your hands forward or walk your feet towards your hands and your hands towards your feet. And then we'll sit the hips low and then lift your heels and let your hips come to your heels. Good, and we'll do a little balance here. So keep the outer ankles hugging in. That'll keep the energy drawing up. And then you can reach the hands forward and reach the arms up. Good, lifting the navel in and up. Uddiyana Bandha, it's that middle lock. And then reach the arms forward. So now we're going to lean forward and start to reach the hips back and we'll land up on the sit bones. Good. And then bring your hands to your shins. I've got my feet about hip width apart. Draw your shoulders back. So I'm plugging my upper arm into the shoulder socket. So rather than letting my hands uh, reach and round my shoulders forward, I'm plugging the upper arm in and drawing my shoulders down my back. Good, inhale, lift your chest. And then exhale, reach your arms forward, carve out your belly and round slightly as you lower halfway down. And then inhale, hold your shins, lift your chest and arch. Exhale, reach your arms forward, draw your navel in and up, round. Good, inhale and lift. And then exhale, we'll round this time, lower down all the way, vertebrae by vertebrae, press into your feet, lower down, releasing the head. Good. Now extend the legs one at a time up into the air. Good. Have your arms by your sides approximately. Tuck your triceps underneath of you. So then there's a slight external ro rotation in the shoulders, spreading in the collarbones. Tighten your kneecaps if you can. The more we can straighten the legs here, then we're strengthening the muscles around the knees. So that helps to protect the knee in our daily activities. And then we're opening up the back of the knee and getting more of a stretch in the hamstring. So this is a great one. If you wanna invest in some yoga props, I love the yoga strap. So you stay where you are and I'll just show you what the strap looks like. Something like this. These are yoga straps. There's like a buckle and you can really use anything like fabric wise, but these are nice and sturdy. And then there's fun things you can do with the buckle. And this is what we can do to help work the opening in the backs of the legs with the straps. And it's a great way to work in the openings and build the strength without fatiguing, like holding the legs up here. It's you can get really fatigued in the hip flexor. So if you want to invest in a strap, you can probably buy them pretty cheap online. And okay. um, yeah. Yeah, I'll order it. I'll do that. Cool. So for now, We'll just bring the legs back up one more time. 
So that will do one at a time. So hold behind your right leg, lower the left leg down, carve out your belly, draw your shoulders down your back, but um, bring your forehead towards your knee. And then we'll switch. So hands behind the left thigh, lower the right leg down, carving out your belly, lift. And then switch and switch and switch and switch and just one more each way right side and switch then both legs up and lower down good bend your knees plant your feet now hold the edges of your mat with your hands and tuck your triceps underneath of you one at a time to draw your shoulder blades down your back. Now the heels, walk them toward your sit bones as close as you can get while having the feet still on the ground. Now we're gonna go into a bridge. So as you press into your feet, lift your pelvis toward the sky and just be careful not to turn your head in bridge pose because you wanna protect your neck. You've got weight on the head, so Want to keep it in center and feel how the floor is like a little massage on the tops of the shoulders. Allow the floor to press the muscles at the top of the shoulders down your back. Now press into your heels, gently pull the floor toward you without actually sliding your feet and just feel the zap of energy, electrifying the legs, the hamstrings, helping to lift even higher through your hips. And let your gaze settle toward the center of your chest as it puffs up with your breath. Pressing down into the full length of your arms. So it's known as Chatush Padasana, like a four-legged pose. One more inhale. And then exhale, we're gonna lower the spine down one vertebrae at a time from top to bottom with control. Release and pause. Rest here for a moment. And then we'll go again. So press into the backs of your arms. Reassert the triceps being tucked underneath of you. So one at a time, shift the shoulders down your back. Then press into your feet, lift your pelvis, stretch your front thighs towards your knees. Look toward the center of your chest. Press down into all four corners of your feet as you pull your shins back toward you so that you go even higher through your pelvis. And breathe. Soft smile on the face, soft through the jaw. Couple more breaths, feel the strength in the legs and the opening in the front of the body. Enjoy the expansion of the lungs, one more breath. And then lower down one vertebrae at a time, starting from the top. Really feel each one touch down. And then once you're fully released, just pause for a breath or two, settling into the floor. And then we'll bring our arms out to the sides like a cactus. So 90 degree bend in the elbows, letting the elbows be about in line with the shoulders and then step your feet a little further apart from each other about as wide as the mat and then we're just going to gently windshield wiper the knees from side to side again as fast or as slow as feels good to you and you can feel there's like a little massage happening on the outside of the hips and the glutes and getting this gentle rotation through the waist Toning the waist. Little massage to all the internal organs. 
supporting the colon and the liver and the kidneys through our movement, through our breath, through our attention. And as the knees go to one side, let your gaze go to the other side, connecting with the flow of your breath. Getting a little stretch through the neck and the collarbones. A couple more times each way. And then finish your next round side to side so that you feel balanced on each side. And then we'll come back to center. Draw your knees towards your chest, wrap your arms around your shins and hug your thighs in and point your tailbone across the room. So the pubic bone and the tailbone point away from your chest as you hug your thighs in. So you'll feel a deeper lengthening in the low back, maybe more intensity in the compression through the hip sockets. Keep the upper arms plugging into the shoulder socket so that the reach around on the legs doesn't pull the shoulders away from the floor. Just gently press the back of your head into the ground to help bring the natural curve into the neck and that will help strengthen the muscles that support the posture in this way. And then we'll go into a deeper twist. So we'll release the legs and start to bring the legs over to the right. Keep the knees hugging together as they come all the way down. And then press into the back of your head and lift your shoulders and shift them a couple inches also to the right so that it feels a little straighter and not as, as constricted in the twist. And then the right hand goes on top of the stacked knees. And as you press into that hand, turn your chest from right to left and stretch your left arm to the left. And then the gaze can also go to the left, but sometimes what I like to do is look to the left and to the right and explore the stretch from my shoulder across my collarbone and up the back of my neck. And then just tuning in, like, is there any area that feels tight? And I move really slowly so that I don't add to any of the tension that already so easily accumulates with all the daily activities. And if you find a place that feels really good hanging out there for a couple more breaths, just welcoming in these nice deep breaths and see where they travel when the usual breathing route is constricted by the twisting. So the breath is now able to be sent into the low back, higher up into the ribs and the chest. And feel if you can go a little deeper in the twist, especially around those inner organ areas, like you're wringing out the inner organs with the exhale. One more full deep breath. Then bring your gaze back to center. Stretch both arms out to the side. Now press down with your palms into the floor and use your bottom leg, your right leg, to lift your top leg back to center. And then just shift a little bit on your back so that you're aligned. And now, with both arms again out to the side. Squeeze the legs together and then lower over to the left. Press into the back of your head and scoot your shoulders a couple inches also to the left. It just helps straighten the spine. 
Stack your knees and then place your left palm on top of that knee and turn your chest from left to right as you stretch your arm out to the right. So left hand on the knees to help keep them stacked. And that's not necessary, it's not wrong. It's actually the full pose is to have both arms out to the side, but it, I like to hold the knee so that they stay stacked. So then it's easier to go deeper into the twist and not just let that hip start to scoot away. So again, exploring with the turn in the neck, finding where the stretch is most needed this morning, this afternoon. And then settling in with breathing. Enjoy each breath. Full and complete inhales and exhales. And let your gaze be soft. Perhaps finding one point to hold the gaze. In yoga, there's always three things that hold our attention in the asana practice. The dynamics of the pose, the breath, and then the focus of the eyes, which is called the drishti or focal point. And with our awareness on these three things, it helps to seize the fluctuations of the mind, which is the ultimate aim or fruit of the yoga practice is the chitta vritti narodaha is the Sanskrit for this cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. So bringing ourselves into that state of being in the calm ocean rather than the storm. So we'll start to come out. So completing your next breath and stretching the arms, both arms are out to the side. So you can press into your palms using some core strength and leg strength. The bottom leg lifts the top leg back to center. And then just wiggle a little bit to feel aligned here. Place your palms, one on each knee now. And then we'll circle the knees out and around away from each other to open up the inner thighs, lubricate the hip sockets. First in one direction. And then reverse direction, staying with full deep breathing in and out of the nose. And then we'll come to happy baby. So to get there, we'll let the knees drop out to the sides and then the feet point toward the ceiling. So the shins start to come vertical and the soles of the feet point up. And then first I hold the, sh the ankles and the shins and then use my elbows inside my knees to push my knees out. Good. And then you can reach up and grab your big toes with your peace fingers and use your arm strength, bend the elbows out to the side and the knees start to pull toward the outsides of the ribs, toward the armpits. And the pubic bone points across the room to descend the tailbone toward the floor to lengthen the low back. And then that action of plugging the upper arm into the shoulder socket to draw the shoulder blades dip firmly onto the floor so that the grip on the feet isn't pulling the shoulders up. And then here with a little smile on the face, the jaw can soften. And when the jaw relaxes, then we're able to work on relaxing the hips. And when the jaw is tense, that tension tends to go down into the lower extremities and the hips. And this is the happy baby. So cultivating that sense of joy, that innate sense that we see in babies, they're just like overflowing with this joyful energy for life just recognizing that that lives inside of us 
meditating on any little speck of that feeling. Maybe it feels really full in our hearts right now, or maybe it's hard to tap in to that sense of joy, but any little seed of that joyful feeling, feel it in your heart center radiating. Having that little smile on the face can help to spread that feeling in the body, even if we don't feel it in the mind logically. Good. And then you can be playful here. So little movements, maybe like swaying side to side. The only time you don't wanna sway side to side is if you ever have like a bulging disc or a slipped disc then no wiggling on the back. So mindful, gentle movements, maybe one leg at a time extends. Or you can even release the legs down, start to bring the knees back together and then keep the knees together and one hand on each knee. Now circle the knees in the same direction at the same time, massaging the low back. And then just gently reversing directions. And then release your feet to the floor. One more time, arms like a cactus, tick tock your knees side to side. And this time when you go over to the right, then place your right foot on the outside of the left knee and help it stretch a little deeper. So you start to feel it going through the hip flexor and up that side of the thigh in front of the thigh. And then before we do the other side, just come back to center with the leg crossed like that for a hip stretch. So figure four, the right knees out to the right, flex your right ankle and that'll protect the knee as we draw the left thigh in. So you can hold behind the thigh or you could hold the leg. As long as you can keep those upper arms plugged into the shoulder sockets so that the grip isn't like pulling you off the floor. Then wherever your hands land, it's okay. Now stretch your inner right thigh towards your inner knee and that'll help flag the knee out to the side and you'll go even deeper into that hip. And breathe, it might even feel good to go. <sighs> you can even open and close the mouth a few times to release the jaw, to help release the hip. <sighs> One more full breath. Good, and release the left foot down to the floor and release the right leg, arms out like a cactus, tick tock a couple times side to side before we do the other side. Massage that hip. Good, and the next time both legs are to the left, pause there and your bottom foot crosses over the top outer knee. And get that stretch all the way up the right side. And the head can be anywhere that feels comfortable, looking up or to the side. So after your next exhale, we'll start shifting back to center for figure four. So the left foot is crossed. Adjust so that your heel is flexed. So that way you have a straight line through the ankle joint and that will help prevent the knee from kinking as you go deeper into the hip by lifting the right thigh toward you. So again, you can hold the leg, you could hold like the heel and the knee or you can hold behind the thigh. It can be different on different days. Energizing the left leg by stretching your inner left thigh toward your inner knee. So what happens there is that knee starts to press away from you just through your muscular strength, which is a, a safe way to start to go deeper into the hip socket. 
I'm feeling this all the way where the femur bone connects into the hip joint. All those strong muscles in the hips through the breath, through the movement, starting to open up. We tend to store a lot of our emotion in the hips. So nurturing these places with deep, full breaths and compassionate awareness. If emotions arise during deep stretches, you can just envision them melting back into the earth to be processed, knowing the earth can take it. So when you're ready after your next breath, start to release the right leg, release the foot to the floor, uncross your legs. And just the last time here with the arms to the sides, like a cactus, tick tock the knees once more. And it might feel good to stay and linger on one side and wiggle a little bit and give the hip and the glute a massage. Good. Now bring your feet together and your knees wide for Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined bound angle. And then we'll make a triangle with the thumbs touching and the pointer fingers touching, and then place it over your lower abdomen so the thumbs touch over the belly button and the fingers point down toward the pubic bone. You can adjust your shoulders down your back here, just wiggling them down your back. And press your heels firmly together and feel your femur bones injecting into the hip sockets. <laughs> Excuse me. And then breathe down deep into your belly and feel your belly expand beneath your hands on the inhale. Feel the belly soften and spread and release on the exhale. Expanding on the inhale. Releasing and the belly just naturally drops down toward the spine on the exhale, helping to push any stale air out. Expansion on the inhale. Gentle contraction on the exhale. All the breath releases. Inhale to expand. Exhale to release. Two more like this. Full belly breath. Don't be afraid to allow the belly to feel full and expanded. Last time here. And bring your hands outside of your thighs and use your hands to gently lift the legs back to center. And we'll move into a supine position. So one leg at a time extends out onto the floor. A little wider than hip width apart and the toes can drop out to the sides. And then your arms can come away from your sides and then tuck your triceps deeper underneath of you one at a time. Tuck the flesh of your buttocks down towards your heels. So all the skin of the back body feels like it's sliding from the back of your head down towards your feet. And then inhale through the nose. And exhale out of the mouth with a little sigh. <sighs> Inhaling through the nose and exhaling. Do that a few more times, however many times feels good. Gradually releasing control of breath. 
Let the lips just barely touch. The tongue floats in the mouth. Soft from the tip to the root. Feel the muscles in the jaw smooth over the bone. The muscles from the center of the forehead smoothing out to the sides. Soft around the eyes. The sense of softness spreading through the body. As if you're being we're like water spreading like a puddle on the floor. Barely any distinction between you and the support beneath you. Like you're merging with the earth. Allow the breath to guide you deeper and deeper into your vast internal landscape. As above, so below, just as we can extend infinitely into outer space, so too can we extend infinitely inward, feeling as if you're diving into the vast luminous darkness in the heart center. Listen for any sound. Could be an unstruck sound. This is the term for the heart chakra is anahata, where the unstruck sound resides, implying that there is this, this vibration. It's like a paradox. It's, it's exists, but it doesn't exist, which is so much of our existence, this paradox. Feel the warmth enveloping your being like a womb of creation existing within you and all around you, holding you, nurturing you in all moments. Just be here in silence now with your being for the next few moments, knowing all is well.
And let your next inhale be a little longer, slower and deeper. So if you're drawing air in through all of your pores. And as you exhale, the air flows out through all of your pores. Like you're opening up all the windows, airing out the household of your body. Few breaths like this, letting the breath breathe you. And take your time on your next exhale, one at a time, float each hand to land on your chest. Take a breath here. And then very gently bending one knee at a time to plant your feet on the floor and pausing here with the breath. And then in order to roll to our right side, scoop the hips a few inches to the left, and then use your right arm as your pillow as you guide yourself to your right side, curling your knees towards your chest to create more space in your low back. Enjoying this moment of reawakening. This moment of rebirth after Shavasana, the corpse pose. Every practice, this is the opportunity to be reborn, coming back with fresh eyes, fresh thoughts. fresh outlook in all ways. And keeping this inward connection. As we begin to rise up, let your head remain passive. Press into your left palm. Move slowly, mindfully, like it's a dance. Making your way back to a comfortable seat where your spine can be lifted and tall. Mm. Mm. Ending practice where we began in Sukhasana, the pose of sweetness. Just tuning in with your spine, with your inner realm, the spaciousness that you've created through your breath, your movement, your awareness. And bringing your palms to touch at heart center. We'll close with the sound of Om. Just one chant after the next inhale. Om. Exhale, bowing your chin towards your chest. Acknowledging all teachers with gratitude, past, present, and future. And acknowledging the greatest teacher of all that lives within you, the capital S self. 